in preparation for our time today at the Lord's table. I invite you to turn to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. We see something in two verses here in Luke 12 on the lips of our Savior that is striking, rather arresting. And it gives us some insight into why Messiah Jesus comes to earth. Looking at Luke 12, 49 and 50. Jesus says, I have come to cast fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed of soul am I until it is accomplished. Jesus says he has come to cast fire on the earth, and there is a desire in Jesus that that fire was already kindled. What does this reveal about our Savior? It reveals that He is in fact God, as God, holy, just, and perfect, and as good and beautiful and infinite in glory, He hates sin, and His anger against sin was kindled, even in His first coming. Jesus will come and fulfill this desire to judge the earth dwellers and to do so by fire. The important contrast for us is at the beginning of verse 50, but I have a baptism to undergo. And we praise the Lord for this contrast. Something must occur prior to Jesus coming and kindling fire. Something must take place before Jesus would come to the earth as judge. And it would be Jesus coming to the earth in order to be judged for sin. Of course, not his own sin, but the sins of all who would place their faith in him unto salvation. Jesus says, but I have a baptism to undergo, an immersion to undergo, and This is a metaphor Jesus is using to talk about being immersed under the wrath of God while our substitute at the cross. It's a metaphor he uses also in Mark chapter 10. To be immersed under God's furious and unrelenting anger in infinite proportion for the sins of all whose place he would take. To bear what we deserved in order that we might receive, instead of just punishment, a declaration of justness. We get declared in God's courtroom as if we had always done everything right and never done anything wrong on the basis of Jesus taking all the punishment we deserved at the cross. And when he says, I have a baptism to undergo... He says, before I bring fire on the earth, on earth dwellers who desperately deserve fire, I will go to the cross and be immersed under the wrath of God so that whoever calls on me in faith will be saved. Jesus is saying you need to be saved from Jesus. And you need to be saved and can only be saved by Jesus. And notice what he says about this immersion under the wrath of God. How distressed of soul am I until it is accomplished. This was not an easy task. But it meant that the perfect one becoming the sin bearer would experience anguish of soul like no other in carrying out that task. Really remarkable things on display here. God will get glory in judgment, and God will get glory in the redemption of sinners who deserve judgment. Friend, if you're here this morning, you need to understand that God will get glory from you. He will get glory either by grace or by just punishment in you. You have an opportunity while you walk God's earth and, bring, and breathe God's air To turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved from your sins 
to be cleansed of the guilt of sin, every sin you've ever committed, past, present, and future, wiped clean in God's assessment by his grace, if only you will cast yourself completely and totally on the Lord Jesus Christ and trust yourself to him, you can have life even here today. We take some juice and we eat some bread as a commemoration of what Jesus did in his first coming to lay down his life. His, the bread is a symbol of his body. The juice is a symbol of his blood spilt. All of that in place of those who would place their faith in Jesus Christ and be saved. If you're here with us this morning, you don't have to be a member of Grace Bible Church, but you do have to be in Christ by faith to partake of these elements of remembrance. And if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, just let the bread and the cup pass you by. Those are for those who have placed their faith in him and now possess eternal life by that faith. We would invite you, if you don't know Christ and would like to know how to know Christ and how to have your sins forgiven, don't leave this place today without talking to someone about how you can have eternal life even this day. The men are going to come forward and distribute the bread and the cup there will be a few moments of silence as an opportunity for you to examine your own heart, to confess any known sin, to rejoice in the forgiveness which Jesus Christ has purchased, and then to partake in remembrance of him. After you've prepared your heart, take. After you've done that, I'll close us in a word of prayer.